Welcome back to this special edition of Indianomics where we are discussing the troubled state of state finances. We've been speaking with uh, Hasib Rabu, Finance Minister of Kerala, uh, uh, Mr. Isaac Thomas, uh, Yamini Ayer, and uh, Aditi Nayar. Hasib, uh, you know, wear your uh, economist hat as well, besides your finance minister's hat or ex-finance minister's hat. Uh, what, you know, one was expecting some kind of uh, an economic upturn. We are seeing it in coal and power. But if you're going to see a fairly, you know, a two lakh crore less expenditure by the states or one and a half lakh crore less expenditure by the states in this quarter, uh, do you think this nascent economic upturn uh, could be uh, smothered? Well, I have a problem with the nascent upturn. I don't see any upturn. I'm only seeing a downturn. So what uh, I see, of course, surely that the fact that state governments will be spending less or will be forced to spend less will actually have uh, an impact and a bearing on the uh, economic growth cycle. Though, I, as Aditi pointed out quite correctly, uh, the states do have a certain leeway, not entirely for the reasons she said that you know they don't accurately forecast, but fact is that uh, towards uh, the state governments do have a certain latitude and the, one of the biggest problems states have is the capacity to spend uh, evenly across the year and meet those targets of spending. But having said that, I think uh, this is going to be a problem both in macroeconomic terms and also fiscal terms. So you are having different pockets of crisis emerge now. You have a banking crisis emerging, you have a fiscal crisis emerging here, which will all in some ways kind of... Uh, get to imp uh, you know implore the economy uh, because d the spread of states across in different segments in different sectors in different spaces is going to actually move the uh, economic recession to a much broader base but what really worries me is not so much what is happening in the in the current one it's happened in the past also as i keep saying the slippage in fiscal of states was driven by the lack of center not meeting targets what really worries me is what this one-year Finance Commission report portends for the future. It doesn't augur well. Which is? They have included now for the first time, I think, uh, which is that, you know, you earmark 4.3% of the divisible pool for panchayats and local bodies. You have made the state Finance Commission redundant now, effectively. So, you know, that is about 1.7% percentage points out of the divisible pool. So effectively, states get 39%, not 40 So that's one crisis that's emerging as a big thing. Okay, okay. Second yeah, is, uh, you never know uh, how the defense and security thing will come up next year. If that is brought in, you actually are now going to squeeze the states both from top, center will preempt for defense and security, and the uh, panchayats and are at the getting lower their level own thing from the center, mm. which is linked to diesel pool. Oh, okay. This is looking serious. Actually, let me get Isaac Thomas on uh, uh, another part that the Finance Commission can do, or uh, is uh, you know at least it's hinting. Uh, uh, Mr. Thomas, we understand that you know that promised 14% growth in sales tax, uh, which is now replaced by GST, is also up for review. Uh, what would be your reaction if, if uh, the Finance Commission or the GST Council asks for a review? Uh, frankly, I think there's a mistake to agree for GST. Uh, look at this. It's in the law. Law doesn't put any condition for compensating the states. Now the centre says they are not going to accept it. I tell you one thing. We are not going to work out a new formula. But I am going to do my level best to persuade the other states to go to the court, Supreme Court, under Article 31, uh, a dispute between the Union of India and I am certain about a dozen states in India on this issue. And that's what we are going to do. We okay. are not going to sit and work out a new formula. Okay, okay. Uh, actually, we have only two minutes left uh, uh, for the end of the show. Hasib, one last uh, one word on uh, will the centre-state relations become very acrimonious going by what uh, you know you have said about preemption for the defence uh, purposes and if this 14% growth in sales tax is also reviewed? Yeah, I mean, it is headed towards that. You know, I, I, and it's sad because in the GST Council... We had found a first federal body, but now, uh, apart from arranging on what was decided in the federal in the GST council, 
you are squeezing in, bringing in elements like tax effort into the GST regime, which I don't know what sense it makes. So you are looking at a proper rupture between the centre and the states. And this time around, as we saw in the GST Council, it will not be around party lines. You know, you have already states like Kerala and Karnataka. We saw these southern uh, states getting together. But now you will realise the, the entire st uh, state governments facing a liquidity crisis, facing the prospect of not getting money, will actually rise up and revolt against the centre. Okay. The, yes, uh, a rupture of state centre, that's the word you use, that's a little serious. Uh, Yamini, I have only 30 seconds for you, but uh, uh, impact on the economy with uh, uh, this uh, political backdrop? No, absolutely. I think the, the rupture is going to get even more severe because now increasingly state governments uh, are being represented by a variety of opposition parties and the centre-state alignment that we saw in the first uh, term of the Modi government is looking very different and therefore you are going to see uh, a lot more pushback from states um, and, a lot big, uh, and, and a lot of questioning uh, of positions. Also, I think uh, bulk of expenditure takes place at the state level. The unpredictability... I want to emphasize this. The states do have headroom, but the unpredictability in finances makes it very difficult to determine your spending. And in the absence of an institutional mechanism to be able to negotiate that, things are going to get, it is going to be difficult uh, going forward. Oh, yes. There is a political economy problem. There is an institutional gap. Uh, and, uh, uh, of course, there is a proper liquidity crisis. Uh, Aditi, again, 30 seconds. Uh, uh, aren't they green shoots? There is more coal offtake, uh, coal output, uh, power uh, uh, consumption is slightly improved. Uh, you think that these green shoots can survive? Lata, absolutely. We've been watching very carefully for the green shoots, but I think the two big risks for Q4 are uh, what happens to trade and tourism, particularly because of coronavirus, and how much do the state governments have to actually compress or defer their uh, spending because of uh, the cut in uh, central tax devolution. I'm going to just leave you with one more statistic. Sure. Our tentative estimate for next year is that the net supply of state development loans is actually going to be higher than the net supply of uh, yes. uh, Government of India securities. So I think that's again something that we need to watch very carefully going into oh, FI21. Absolutely. This will be unprecedented. For the first time, the states will borrow more than the centre and that can have its own impact on yields uh, in uh, the government securities market. Uh, Hasib Brabu, uh, Yamini Ayer, Aditi Nayar and uh, Thomas Isaac, thank you very much indeed for joining me in this conversation. We are in for some financial and liquidity trouble for the states. We are also in for some acrimonious states, center-state relations. Thank you very much for watching this special edition of Indianomics.